Hi there, welcome to Sunday with Sarah. I'm Sarah Baldwin, and today I want to try to answer the question, what is Waldorf education in a nutshell? People always ask this question if they've never heard of Waldorf. They want to know briefly what it is. It's so hard to describe it in a nutshell because I've been studying Waldorf education for 20 years and been involved for that long, and it's so deep and multi-level, there's so much um, to be said. But I'll try to give you just five examples of things that make Waldorf education unique. And being an early childhood teacher myself, first thing I want to tell you about is that we, in early childhood, nursery and kindergarten, it's a non-academic preschool environment. Um, so we're not teaching numbers or math or the alphabet or reading. However, children are building those pre-math and pre-reading skills through hearing stories, fairy tales, doing circle games in rich language. They're hearing poetry and memorizing it. They're hearing it through repetition. So they're building these big vocabularies, but we're not letting, we're letting their imagination unfold and not pushing it in an academic way. Um, there's a misconception that uh, because of this, Waldorf schools are anti-reading. This could not be further from the truth. I'll talk about that in a further episode. It just comes later. A lot of children aren't ready to read in the early childhood years. It, their brains need to be ready to do the decoding work, and that happens at different ages for different children. So we just let it unfold in time, just as a child learns to walk without us giving them walking lessons. Uh, another aspect that makes Waldorf unique is the emphasis on storytelling. Starting in the early years, teachers tell stories by heart. I prefer to say by heart rather than memorize, which is a little colder. But we learn the story, we tell it with eye contact, heart to heart, teacher to child. Um, and throughout the grades, storytelling continues in the grade school when children are studying history or legends, they're still hearing um, stories told by heart from their grade school teacher. It makes subjects come alive. Another interesting aspect of Waldorf education, and it's the first thing I remember ever hearing about Waldorf education that made me want to learn more, was that the arts are integrated into all subjects. Now, coming from a theater background myself and being a creative person, this really piqued my interest and appealed to me. I thought if I had had that kind of education, how much richer my, my own schooling experience would have been. And examples of this are when uh, children, a class is studying a subject, it might be that one, one subject might be approached through movement. It could be clapping games. Um, they're drawing, creating art, painting, drawing that subject. My son Harper, who's now grown, was just sharing with me recently how um, learning math this way and color, he learned math and numbers through color in each number, had a color associated with it. So what's interesting about this approach you may have heard of Howard Gardner and his theory of multiple intelligences. Well, Rudolf Steiner, many decades earlier in the 1920s, prescribed this way of learning, approaching different subjects through different arts, which reaches all those different kinds of learners. The kinesthetic learners learn through movement, through maybe learning math, through clapping and stomping games. Um, visual learners will learn by um, creating art in their main lesson books, which I'll talk more about in a minute, um, and so on. Um, another thing that makes Waldorf education unique is that ideally, a class teacher will stay with the same group of children from first grade through eighth grade. It doesn't always work out that way, but um, that's the ideal. And um, 
a lot of parents who are new to this idea question it. Well, what if you have a bad teacher? Um, I'm not going to lie, and it does happen occasionally, but more often, the kinds of teachers who are drawn to Waldorf education are so dedicated, and the group becomes a family, and that teacher becomes an expert in those children and knows how they learn. Traditionally, when you change year by year, grade by grade, teacher by teacher, the teacher spends the better part of a year just getting to to learn and know your child and how they learn and how to reach them. And uh, maybe just when they're making progress, the child goes on to another teacher. The other benefit I see to this is the class teacher always has to stay one step ahead of the children. Learn, they might spend their summer learning the subjects they're going to be teaching in the upcoming grade, which makes it fresh for them. They're learning too and um, convey that enthusiasm for the subject with the children and learning together with the children. And now more and more public schools and mainstream schools are incorporating this idea of looping, they call it, of one teacher staying with a group of children for multiple grades. One thing I should add about that, the, in early childhood, in kindergarten, the kindergarten teacher stays um, with the younger children, but once they get to grade school, they'll have a class teacher who moves up with them grade by grade. And um, finally, there are no textbooks used in Waldorf education. Instead, children make their own textbooks called main lesson books. Now a main lesson, and this is another thing that makes it unique, children, instead of having several subjects in a day, will have one main lesson block for typically three to four weeks, you know, maybe a month long, studying one subject. In sixth grade, it might be Roman history. In um, second grade, it might be legends and heroes. But they will study that one block for about two hours every morning when they're at their freshest, and then take those lessons and write and illustrate their own textbook which makes it so much more meaningful, helps it go in at a deeper level where they're really thinking about the subject, and it's really embedded in their, their memory for life, rather than just reading a pre-printed textbook written by some textbook author that's quickly read, memorized, and forgotten. So there's so much more that could be said on this subject. This is just my feeble attempt at giving it to you in a nutshell. So if you want to learn more about Waldorf education, and I hope you do, there are lots of great books and resources available. Um, one book, if you're a parent of a young child, that I highly recommend, it was my first introduction to Waldorf education, it's called You Are Your Child's First Teacher, written by my friend and colleague Rahima Baldwin Dancy, no relation. Um, it's a, a great introduction to the early years with ideas for how to incorporate Waldorf into your home. And I will do a future video on how you can bring Waldorf education uh, into your home if you're not able to send your child to a Waldorf school or if you don't live near one. And also the website of OSNA, the Association of Waldorf Schools of North America, has a great website with lots of links to resources, lots of information. You'll find that at waldorfeducation.org. You might also want to check out waldorfshop.net, which has a lot of resources to um, books and resources, uh, art supplies, toys, everything, anything related to Waldorf education. So I uh, hope that helps. I'll be back talking more about Waldorf-related subjects and other parenting and play subjects in future videos. So don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Have a day full of play.